have for a smarter you. Speaking of Jollof Wars, we took a trip to Nigeria, you know, they are, uh, to Ghana, I mean to say, you know, they are our brothers. And I had a chat with um, David Antwi Ofori. He is uh, the head of operations, Ghana Digital Centers. You know, in the last episode of Tech Up, I told you that Ghana is digitizing the sensors. That was how we opened the conversation. And he was so optimistic about it. And he threw a challenge to Nigerians that um, I think the interview will tell you better. Nigeria, I told him Nigerians are going to come for him. The Jollof War is not enough, right? Nigeria, <laughs> are we going to have a tech war between Ghana and Nigeria? We're going to find out. So this is what the interview sounded like with David. Enjoy this. I'm really, really glad we're traveling all the way to Ghana to hear what's going on. Um, in the tech community in Ghana. So I want to first of all get your comment on how reliable and how true and how possible it will be for Ghana to digitize its sensors. We saw it all over the news. You know, I just want to get your reaction as a Ghanaian who is in Ghana and is doing so much with tech in Ghana. Right, uh, thanks for having me, uh, Mercy, and uh, thanks for having me on Tech Hub. Yes, um, it is doable. Um, if you look at Ghana as a country, we've We've, we've, we've done a lot of things in terms of the digitalization agenda. And, and sometimes I would say that we've actually even surpassed our own um, estimations or expectations, if you like. I don't see why we cannot do that because um, currently as we speak now, the only way to get a Ghanaian passport is through a digital platform. It doesn't matter where you are in the country, it doesn't matter which locality you are in, the only way you can obtain a Ghanaian passport is on a digital platform. So guess what? All that data is being captured. So by that data alone, it can tell us, um, at least it can give us an insight into our populates who at least hold passports. Currently, we've done um, what we call the Ghana card, or there's a national identification system. That has close to 18 million of our population on that platform. And that's, this is just the adult population because it was rolled out from 18 years and older. Now they've expanded the network to the point that they have offices in every nuke and cranny of the country. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're looking to roll out for the below 18, which is right from birth until you are 18. We want to capture all these people. So if that is done, why can't we have a digital census? Absolutely fantastic to see an African country, a West African nation like Ghana, doing um, so much with technology and helping people understand how they can thrive with technology. But I, from what you've said, it looks like Ghana has a pretty healthy tech ecosystem. I mean, Nigerians would probably tell you it's neither here nor there, but I, I wonder what it is like in Ghana. It's like the government versus the people, mm. the government versus the stakeholders. What is that relationship like? Well, you see, yes, there is always that sentiment. I mean, uh, and this is, there's a history to that. I mean, historically, our political elites have not done well or they've not done well with the citizenry in terms of managing the office and the resources that are given, being given to them uh, to, to the benefit of the public. So there's always that citizen government suspicions, you know, they don't fully trust government to do what they say they will do because historically they've not really done right by us. So you can understand those sentiments. And that sentiment feeds into, it tends to feed into all other spheres of our life, whether it is in, in, in private sector or it's in, in, in everything else. So. And it is not new in terms of the tech space either. So clearly that sentiment is there. But what we have done well in Ghana, I mean, and, and what we should be doing well um, is, uh, I mean, in Ghana we've done well with that because we've said to, with the establishment of the, of the Ghana Digital Centers Limited, um, which, you know, operates from the Accra Digital Center uh, where I work, we clearly made private sector aware that, look, we are not in to compete. Um, we, we are in to, if you like, augment and enhance what you're already doing. Because, first of all, there has to be the acknowledgement that private sector have are contributing their bit or are doing their bit. So 
before the emergence of any government intervention, clearly the private sector are doing a thing or two, even if it's not enough. So when you acknowledge what they are doing, it then situates it well to let them know and understand that at least our good work is also being recognized. You can't just come in as a government and say, look, everything else you're doing in private sector is rubbish. We've done that arrangement well and that relationship is working well. And everything we do here at the digital center, we do it in collaboration with the private sector. Speaking of digital center, which I am so happy to hear that you're running, how about tech talents? How, how are the people adapting and embracing you know, technology? Um, and how has the proliferation of tech talents you know, uh, become in Ghana. In Nigeria, it is right. Everybody is becoming a tech group, text is going into product design, development, um, coding, and the rest of them. I wonder if, 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 if it's the same for Ghana. Yes, I mean, it, it is, it is a, I mean, it is a world phenomenon. You see, one of the things that uh, Africa government, and I'm glad that uh, they are all waking up to it because these things will happen even, even if they don't partake in it. The single largest threat to any African government is technology. Because, look, these days it's not about pulling guns anymore. It's really about <laughs> knowing your stuff in the tech space and you can do things around the government and what can government do? You can decide to shut down the airspace. Or sh- but, well, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Tesla will come around and provide connectivity using the space, as we, as we saw in the Russia-Ukrainian war. So it speaks to us that we are in, new, we are in a paradigm shift where... Tech will happen regardless of government. The good thing is that government is participating. So, uh, and when it comes to tech talent, you know, people are catching up to the, the wave that, look, it is the only way you can empower yourself, whether economically or even as a citizen, be part of global citizenship. And I know my, my, my brothers and sisters in Nigeria will come, come, come after me, but in the West, Af- West Africa sub-region, um, we are the most digitally literate per capita. Oh, yes. So you have numbers, but if you do it, if you drill it down to per capita in terms of population and the percentage of population that are digitally literate, we are ahead in West Africa. All right, when it comes to that population. That, and, and, yes, I essentially agree with you. Sorry to put you here. When it comes to population, yeah. Compared, Nigeria seems to be still the giant of Africa because we've, they've got a population and Ghana is just, you know, some percentage yeah. of Nigeria's population. But because of time, we have to come to, the, you know, put put a stop to the conversation right here. Um, it is an interesting one. The Nigerians are going to come for you. Trust me, Nigerians are going to I know. a huge debate on Twitter. Hashtag Ghana coming, versus Nigeria. They've been, coming, they've, been coming, they've been coming for us with a jollof rice fight. And we've still right. it's, so nice. it's going to be tech wars. But thank you so much. I really look forward to Nigeria, Ghana, since they're like brothers and sisters from the back in the days to come together and form a collaboration to make West Africa, you know, hopefully, uh, the region of uh, what's it called tech headquarters in, in the continent. So we can be able to export what we have and you know people in the developed communities can come and find a way for to learn how we are able to use technology to solve the little pocket of problem in our communities. Thank you so much, yeah. Dave. We hope hopefully look forward to having you in the conversation again. Sure, sure. And I look I look forward to that because there's a lot more we can explore. I mean how we use tech to navigate our way around COVID and why COVID couldn't uh, really uh, uh, lay hold on us like they did in the West. These are all things because we've used technology to leapfrog in a way. And, and, and I'm happy to share the Ghana story, how we use drones to collect samples and all of those things. So Absolutely. clearly um, there's a lot more we can, we can delve into. And, uh, and I look forward to the next set of yes, conversations. Absolutely. We have you back on Take Up. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you very much. Take Up for a smarter year.